Nigerians that they will not be disappointed for appreciating the government's efforts at making life better for all, especially under economy facing the severest test from the global coronavirus pandemic. While thanking the people immensely for their trust in the party and government, the statement congratulates the successful candidates, saying President Buhari in particular is very pleased with the election outcomes and urges the party to uphold the spirit of hard work, unity, progress and cooperation that forms the bedrock of these victories. To bridge the Nigerian Air Force capability gap in special forces and combat search and rescue operations, 203 troops have been injected into the existing force. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Baba Abubakar, announced this at the graduation of the combined team at the Nigerian Air Force Regiment Training Center, Air Force Base Bauchi. 100 of these forces in Binwe State, another 200 in Zamfara State that are fighting side by side with ground troops in order to ensure the security of our country. Their performance has proven that enhancing the capacity and capability of our personnel is the best way of ensuring the attainment of our operational goals and objectives. Away from security to health now, some 318 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC, bringing the number of cases to 69,255 in Nigeria. Of the 318 new cases, Lagos has 104 Kaduna 59, the FCT 50, Rivers 17, Ogun 16, Kano and Nasarawa 14H, Akwai and Katsuna half 10H, Edo 7, Oyo and Sokoto confirmed 5H, Plateau has 4, and Taraba 3. Lagos remains top on the list of cases per state with 23,850 cases. The FCT follows with 7,279 cases and Plateau with 3,914 cases. 64,774 recovered patients have been discharged while 1,180 people have died from COVID-19 complications. That's the morning news for now. The program continues with Claire and Kinsley after this break. Good morning. A scorecard like no other. Government has put in place measures and initiatives principally targeted at youths, women, and the most vulnerable groups in our society. These included broad plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. The creation of 75 billion Naira National Youth Investment Fund to provide opportunities for the youths and the micro, small and medium enterprises survival fund, through which government is A. Paying three month salaries of the staff of 100,000 micro, small and medium enterprises. B. Paying for the registration of 250,000 businesses at the Corporate Affairs Commission. C. Giving a grant of 30,000 naira to 100,000 artisans and guaranteeing market for the product of traders. These are in addition to many other initiatives such as farmer money, trader money, market money, and power, and tech and end agro. These and more in spite of a recession and a global pandemic. Although social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless, it becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. 
bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. The Council of Our Fathers. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. Nigerian youths. Let's build our nation together. Treat your family to a cereal that's made from the natural goodness of maize and soya protein and specially combined with Grain Smart, a smart combination of vitamins and iron. So that they have the right kind of energy to help them reach their full potential and turn the simple into amazing. Eat up and carry go because nothing do you. Golden Morn, make every day amazing. Nestle, good food, good life. Life can be very eventful. We curiously expect things to happen even when we don't know what. Our human nature makes us like and repost lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. Watching Good Morning Nigeria, reaching you live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. It's time for business news, and here is our correspondent, Comfort Amodu. With Nigeria evolving ways to ratify the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, which will serve as a major boost for the African economy, governments at state and local government levels are equally strategizing on ways to enhance agricultural marketing at the grassroots to make farming more attractive to youths. Stakeholders believe this will boost productivity and create more trade links between state and rural areas, hence the advocacy to establish more markets in the country. Farming is under subscribed. This market is a kind of way by which a lot of economic problems of this country can be addressed. The solution is farming. Once we go back to farming, the history will be different. Whether it is dry season, whether it is rainy season, or whatever season, if you should come to the market, you should be able to access any fresh fruits from the market. The, the government targeting that sector is, uh, is laudable. Not only laudable, it is one in realization of our objective reality that if we have to divert to, to diversify our economy, our focus must be on agriculture because it's, it's still the largest employer of labor in Nigeria. With business news, Comfort Amodu. All right, that was Comfort Amodu on the business news this morning. Coming up next is the newspaper review with Bayo Atoebe. Don't go away.
right, Baya Toby is right here with us in the studios. Baya, good morning and welcome. Thank you, Kinsley. Good morning. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, good morning Baya. Good to see you. Good to see on you a bright too. Monday morning. Yes. I hope I you had a pleasant weekend. Yes, a very restful one. Very well. All right, so let's begin uh, with the window page of the Punch newspaper from top to bottom. That's to say above the name plate, pension contributors withdraw 14.79 billion naira as job losses rise. Pension contributors withdraw 14.79 billion as job losses rise. That's page 25. No resumption until federal government pays withheld salaries. That's according to ASU. Details on page 44. Federal government revives 300 hectares farmland, engages uh, 400 youths. That's on page uh, 26. These headlines are, of course, above the uh, name flag. Uh, once again, as we're saying, no resumption until federal government pays withheld salaries. Two earpieces beside the name flag, uh, Nigeria's airlines may merge due to pandemic. Uh, NCAA boss and federal government submits uh, after ratification instrument to AU, that's the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The late story comes with a kicker and that says recession. Experts warn states as governors justify bloated appointments with three riders. Despite recession, federal government keeps 145 aides and 43 ministers. Ayade won't sack 6,000 appointees. Government must spend more. That's according to one of his commissioners. States have too many essays. Some governors charter aircraft, says economist. And then you have uh, headlines below the photographs there on the front page. By election. Police comb by SRC for six drowned corpses. That's page seven. Vigilantes strip reverse pastor for defiling three daughters. And court okays suit seeking information on CBN and staff. And below that, we we'll take uh, two of those headlines. Junkun conquered and renamed our villages, T. Village. APC wins Plateau, Lagos, and Imo senatorial seats. PDP clinches Cross River and Bayesa. Okay. Okay, Brian Kingsley, thank you. Um, the Daily Trust leads with the story, danger as recycle, recycled SIM cards flood streets and markets. And with the riders, vendors register customers without ID. The act compromises national in security experts. Uh, NCC telecoms deny wrongdoing even as shoddy deals persist. Uh, you can read up the details of those uh, stories on page four. And the pictures, uh, of course, on the front page are accompanying pictures to the story. That's the late story. But uh, let's take you below the nameplate there. Importers grown as cost of doing business rises by 600% at Tin Can Port, that's in Lagos, page 23. 15 by elections, PDP kicks as APC wins in Lagos, Bochi, and others, page 7. And um, trending at the foot of the paper, gunmen kill four in Zamfara. 17 million Ghanaians select new president today. And it is of that on page 46. Bye. Thank you, Claire. Let's start with the uh, 15 by elections that was held over the weekend. Uh, unfortunately, police officers, 11 of them who were conveying election material from uh, Yenegua to Opokoma uh, in the speedboat. Unfortunately, the speedboat capsized. Five were rescued and six were declared missing. However, when marine police and local divers searched the uh, seas, they were able to recover six bodies. Governor Doyodiri of Bayesa State has condoled the Inspector General of Police over the days and says it's very sad that the officers died while on national duties. Meanwhile, election results have been announced by the returning officers. All Progressive Congress won the Lagos East Senate seat as well as the Kushofe to Lagos State House of Assembly. In Kasina, the Bakurist by-election was won by APC. In Das, Bauchi State, APC clinched 
just as it clinched the plateau north seat in a senatorial seat in Kogi, the Ibaji constituency also went to the All Progressive Congress. However, in Imo State, the returning officer declared APC as a winner, but he couldn't declare a candidate because uh, on Friday, a high court in Abuja had barred uh, Ifeanyi Ibezim from contesting. On the same day, the appeal court also sacked Ararume as the candidate. So the APC won, but we are not too sure who is the candidate. In Bielsa, the, can, uh, the Bielsa Central and Bielsa West were all won by the People's Democratic Party. In Cross River, the North Senatorial seat as well as Obutu state constituency were won by the PDP. In Enugu, the issues of state constituency was claimed by the People's Democratic Party. Um, Zamfara, where there was also by election, results of five polling units have been upheld and the election was declared inconclusive. As we speak, two ad hoc INEC staff are still missing. Um, coming Before to leave the issue of, of uh, for us to develop a new attitude, as it were, to incidents that occur in the course of elections, particularly in riverine areas. We saw the off-cycle election in Ondo the other day, and as uh, materials and polling officers were being conveyed to Elijah, the speedboat, uh, there was an accident. And luckily, the uh, officials and some of the materials were rescued. But we do get to know that even in the course of general elections or, or some other occasions, these accidents happen, uh, persons get drowned, and oftentimes that is the end of the story. And it shouldn't be so. Whatever compensation will be paid to the families, fine. But what was the cause of the accident? And nobody has ever indicated to us what the cause of the accident was. You have lost six police officers. Consider the cost of training one police officer. And consider the fact that six police officers would now not be available on their beats. Consider also the losses to their families. What was responsible for that accident? I'm just asking, was it the negligence of the, boats, of the, of the boat driver? It, was it something? So we have never gone ahead to investigate. I'm not aware if they had carried out any sort of investigation. It is not a boat accident. It's not an act of God. Yes. So there must be a cause, or there must be causes. And if there are causes or causes, then there must be consequences. You know, well, Kisley, uh, indeed, indeed, sorry, Bayo, mm. indeed, uh, accidents... Uh, well, both accidents are not an uh, act of God, but you know that's why they are accidents. They, there could be some uh, other, you know, factors underneath the water, like uh, uh, maybe a rock or something rocking the boat. The boat. But in this particular case, you would expect the the, the, the members, you know, undertaking such national assignment are uh, adequately, you know, catered for. It's either the the boat, you know, I mean, was overloaded. Or, or the, the men in the, in the boat, or the members in the boat, were not adequately kitted. You know, maybe the safety... Uh, should be involved, because you ask yourself, as Claire was saying, was the boat that was used to ferry the materials and officers, was the boat safe to be used? Who was the driver yes. of that boat? What kind of life jackets did they have? Mm -hmm. what, what was this? Those are the things to find out from investigation. And if there was negligence, as I said, there will be consequences. Yes. It is not that it has happened, so, you know, may, may their souls rest in peace, they were waiting for the next accident they to occur. They died in the line of duty. Yeah, they must, of course, not, this is, they have died in the line of duty, and there are consequences. And the families, sometimes, unfortunately, they are incapacitated, they can't take actions on their own. Things like this cannot just be happening. Six policemen, for one election, one by election, I mean, it's, it's one uh, of fifteen local uh, by elections. Absolutely. Well, the other two stories. One is about academics. In that, the National Association of Academic Technologies (NAS) has warned the federal government not to accept UTAS, the University Tertiary Accounting Solution. NAS says that it has produced its own platform known as Tertiary Institution Integrity Payroll System mm. (TIPS). Uh, the president of NAS, Ibeji Ngokoma, says that go of the NTA. Today we'll also um, raise the bar on our conversation on the auto gas alternative to petrol. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise 
our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. It's a season of smiles on our faces with LifeMate Furniture's 48% discount on all products, 20% discount on Royal products, and 30% discount on VMate electrical appliances. From the 27th November to 20th December, treat your loved ones and win cars, refrigerators, TV, and electric. B to back losses. TB test and TB treatment are free. Just call the National TB Hotline on 080022. 552282 for information on where to get the test. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health with support from the American people. Nigerian youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mamadou by the CBN and several other conditional cash transfer programs, recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of of patience and time, it can't cool gains. Real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. You're still watching Good Morning Nigeria live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Now to kickstart our conversation segment, which is on auto gas as an alternative to petrol, let's listen into this background report by Uyemi Ajayi, our correspondent. Still normal cars plying the roads daily, but what is now different is the source of any fuel. And this is set to become a new normal as the federal government unveils the auto gas policy with the target of converting 1 million vehicles by 2021. The auto gas is set to be better, cleaner, safer, and eco friendly energy option for Nigerians, which prevents carbon monoxide emission. It's all part of the National Gas Expansion Program to increase utilization of gas for which Nigeria boasts of proven reserve of and if such car be powered interchangeably without danger of explosion. With 9,000 filling stations be sufficient for this policy? And what is the disposition of Nigerians to this initiative? Guests on the program will give their perspectives shortly. <laughs> Yemi Ajayi there with a background uh, to our conversation. And just to remind you that last week, the, auto, the president, of course, uh, launched the first uh, director general, National Auto Automotive Design and Development Council, NEDDC. Thank you, sir, for joining us. My pleasure. Yes. And also joining us from our BNE studio, Professor Albert Obano. He's a professor of mechanical engineering University of Benin. Prof, thank you very much for joining us. Human Satisfaction and Safety Initiative. Uh, Mr. Wari, a pleasure to have you with us again. We had you on a call when we first took on this topic some months ago. Good morning, Nigeria. Happy to have me here. All right, uh, gentlemen, let's begin first with Jelani Aliu, uh, of course, who's a very familiar face around the world. And for us here on Good Morning Nigeria, once again, delight to have you. Nigeria's drive towards the use of what is commonly referred to as auto gas. Is this ambitious or is it the way to go, considering the energy issues around the world today? Uh, yes, thank you. It's good to be here again. Uh, I believe it's something that uh, is not ambitious. Uh, it's, it's not going to be easy, but yes, it's something that has to be done for at least three reasons. Number one, in 2016, Nigeria uh, was one of the 196 countries that uh, uh, signed the Paris Accord, this thing, so as to slow down global warming and even maybe reverse it. Uh, so the traditional uh, fuels, petrol and diesel, contribute to this uh, harmful gas emissions. So it has to be uh, uh, stopped or, or lessened. 
Uh, and then Nigeria has huge reserves of gas, uh, the seventh in the world, uh, the largest in Africa, that we're currently underutilizing. So we need to leverage that uh, fuel source to power our economy. And then health-wise, uh, diesel and petrol, they release relieved... ...involved in, in this type of initiative. Yes, well, our agency, the National Automotive Design and Development Council, our core objective is to develop the local automotive industry. That is to, uh, to promote the production and assembly of vehicles within Nigeria. So as we support the conversion of vehicles, uh, even those that would be hard to do it and address the technical uh, challenges, we're also promoting the production and assembly of brand new vehicles that would run on gas or gas and diesel or petrol. Um, some, like I mentioned earlier, uh, petrol and diesel burn dirtier than gas. Gas is a cleaner fuel. Uh, it has less particulates, uh, so it's easier for an engine to handle that. So we will work with stakeholders to ensure that these technical challenges are identified and addressed. You know, I asked the question because I understand that you probably will have to, in, in, in converting to you know auto gas, mm -hmm. you you would have to of course uh, have a, maybe another tank installed mm -hmm. somewhere in the car, yes. either where you have your spare tire or somewhere in the boat in the boat or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now that is one, mm -hmm. that that that's an issue. You also have to be careful with the piping. Mm -hmm. You also have to be careful with um, in terms of you know the the mileage that the, mm. the car will cover. So are these not issues that are involved in, in this kind of a, uh, initiative? They have to be addressed, and that is why we're working towards uh, training. For most Nigerians, what, from your professional point of view, are the mechatronic issues to worry about with this process of conversion uh, from a vehicle using petrol to vehicles now to be using auto gas? Thank you for having me and your question. Of course, to embark on a scheme like this, first and foremost, you must have people who have been trained with the necessary skills and competencies to embark on this conversion. So you need the kit, you need all the other auxiliaries to ensure that this thing can be done. As the previous speaker said, of course, apart from the kit, of course, you need the piping system, the auxiliaries, and of course, the tank. Uh, people must be trained in fixing these things into vehicles in an efficient and safe manner. If these things are not done, then there are issues. The other thing I must also point out, as regarding the natural gas is able to reach uh, various locations. Uh, no, okay. I, prefer, I mean, uh, Prof, I, I asked about the mechatronic. That's to say, what are the mechanical issues to worry about? I mean, it does it mean that Every engine, you know, we keep hearing engine blocks and all kinds of uh, connections and fittings that you have in there. Is it every engine that is amenable to utilize gas or there are issues to be concerned about? I mean, you have all kinds of vehicles on our roads and I'm sure... you be tackled first and foremost is to see whether these engines are adequate for conversion. So the technicians that have been trained will of course inspect the engine and check whether they are in a state for the conversion to be made. As I said again, ideally, Brand new engines or engines that are not so old and engines that are well maintained are best suited for this conversion. So if those things are not in place, then the, the problems with the conversion begin to escalate. So we must be very sure that at the onset, a proper test of the vehicles must be made to see whether they are in a ready state for conversion. Ideally, as I said earlier, uh, brand new engines and engines that are not so old and engines that have been maintained are best suited for conversion. All right, uh, thank you, um, Prof. Uh, Obano from Benin. Let's uh, join Professor Fatai Anafi, uh, who is joining us via Zoom all the way from Zaria. Professor Anafi, if you can hear me, um, it would appear that um, there is much more, you know, uh, 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 that we are having to deal with. We are getting to understand this uh, technology, you know, s gradually, small by small, as we will say. Uh, you, you heard um, the, uh, Mr. Jelani here talk about the fact that this is uh, a technology. For other parts of the world, it might not be a new technology. But for us here, it is a new technology. And given, again, 
whether the engine is new or the type of engine, the you know capacity of the engine, the age of the engine has come into play. Is this a technology that we should rush? What are your concerns about it? The price of uh, uh, PMS as is uh, fluctuating in the market and even uh, for ad uh, affordability of the um, uh, Professor Nafi, I don't, I don't know if you're back, if you're back with us. Uh, uh, okay. I, I'm asking because if you consider the fact that we're having to train the expertise, we don't have them. We don't have the, in terms of the expertise and human resource, uh, you know, to take care of, of the gaps. We don't have... Now that is uh, linking those two Zoom connections for us, uh, we understand this often in the meantime. But now let's return to our protocol studios where we earlier introduced Dixon Iwarime, who is an indigenous fabricator of gas storage tanks. Uh, Mr. Iwarime, of course, uh, let's begin this. You, you recall when we had this uh, first conversation on the issue of auto gas. So, but you then said that, look, there was a ramp up in the production and distribution of the gas storage tanks. What do we know at the moment uh, as to uh, the drive to fully equip uh, gas stations with this facility. The issue, we have certifications that are necessary from the DPRO and also from SUN. We have markup. And that means our products are of international standard. Most of the products we have, the LPG tanks we find in Nigeria, 95% of them are used tanks. They are making Nigeria a dumping ground. Why we have the capacity here to produce? Why should we go and patronize those that produce tanks in one that you don't have the technology for now or the capacity to produce in country is that of the CNG because of its complexities. For the storage tanks, we can meet the demand. As we say in oil, uh, this, we can wet the market if only we can be engaged, if only we can be patronized. Mind you, we patronize the indigenous fabricators of the LPG tank. One, the welders that will go to work, they will enter transport. They will go to Mama Put, they will go and eat. And that means as they go to eat, because the food that they eat are mi mi miango pepper from Jaws, they are going to eat beans, beans that came that come from um, Borono State. They are going to eat meat, possibly from Katsina and what have you. What are you doing? You are developing the economy because the welder, he will not have money to pay the school fees of his children. As he spends time, that we are launching a. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much for having me. Um, uh, we've been promoting the use of uh, gas as an alternative for a few years now, and uh, we are quite honoured to be to have converted about ninety nine percent of the vehicles unveiled by Mr. President. Uh, we've converted the buses to CNG dual fuel, and we've done the LPG on uh, on um, <clears throat> the petrol engines on LPG. So uh, we've trained quite a few guys. Yes, those components that we don't have the capacity to source them locally. And uh, what my uh, or what we want to say for the tank, for instance, uh, it's a it's a separate autogas tank. It's not like the normal cylinder tanks. We can manufacture them locally, we can have them locally, but we need to have the right things for that. And uh, we're working with the right uh, uh, team. We're working with uh, Jelani Aliu's team as well to see how we can uh, produce some of these components locally, which we are hoping to do. But for now, I have to be honest, we're proud of every single uh, vehicle you, you saw on Tuesday on Vail by the Mr. President, we converted them by Nigerians, 100% Nigerians. So that's knowledge transfer that is most important at the moment. Uh, the component, uh, we have to look at what we can manufacture locally. And we're looking, give and take, in the next six, seven years, we can do at least 50 or 60% of what we're importing. We can have them done more locally because we can't just say we want to start manufacturing and we start manufacturing. We need to follow the trend. So uh, for me, uh, we are proud of what we've done. Uh, knowledge transfer, job empowerment, job opportunities, youth empowerment, knowledge in every capacity to ensure that uh, perfect installation is done. Because you only just need one bad conversion and the whole thing is gone. And uh, that's possible. But again, 
wants to do a retrofitting of an engine that already runs on petrol to, to go on dual fuel LPG. And um, in the case of diesel, you allow diesel supply at 45%. If you push the engine, you get 50%. And uh, there's quite a lot, of, a lot of things that we need to come to terms with that we needed to understand. And it's more of awareness. Uh, we've engaged people at all places. We had people say, Nipco did it in Benin. What's the outcome? But we know that one of the problems we had with after sales market. So after conversion, what happened next? Who and who are being allowed to look into the cars? For instance, my car is running on gas. It developed fault. I take it to a roadside mechanic. It's just going to say, oh, introducing gas as an alternative. Then which one is best for us? We have people saying, oh, but LPG cooking is very expensive. But we are not planning to use that one that we are using for cooking. We're planning to use pure propane, which, again, we have it locally. So there's one thing that is guaranteed. You won't need to import gas. We have them locally. We can use what we have locally. We brought CNG for the first time to Abuja on Tuesday. That's an achievement that we are, we are proud to do with our gas. So, yeah, there's so many things that we can use. Or we use the LNG regasification, which Greenview does have. So all of these gases that we can use as an alternative to reduce the pressure on PMS, we have them available, but we need to do them the right way. And we're very, very much available to get it done. Thank you very much. Jumwa, just before we let you go, um, yes, well, we, we'll speak with them, you know, um, I like to look at it from the point of availability and cost. And of course, this is how it affects the end users, you know, the ordinary man who drives his probably old car and, you know, would want to save some costs from the use of petrol. Now, you listen to our guests uh, in our Port Accord studio, that's uh, Mr. Dixon, manufacture some of those uh, facilities. Now, are you aware of this availability? And if so, what are your concerns? Did you consult them? Uh, that's my first question. Then secondly, we also know that um, some cars can't handle um, you know, I mean, uh, cannot be converted without modification. So, and we understand that the, the manufacturers of, short, of such cars have said that, look, if you do... And you zero mileage vehicles, like the likes of Innocent Motors, like the likes of uh, Kuscharis, bringing in Toyotas and all of that, you can modify those ones. But one of the things that is expected of you is uh, you have to check the certification. We have the R120 certification, R70 certification. Those certification allows you to modify brand new cars to, 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 so that the warranty does not, uh, 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 is not voided. So I'll give an example in, in Turkey. We have that of uh, Toyota. They are refusing modification in Turkey. They only say they can do that in Asia. And because the market is big and open for the Turkish market is big for Toyota, they had to object to that and say, okay, for YouTube, most going to be as brand as new. So we do them on OEM installation, which is direct from factory. And in the case of Nigeria, it's going to be DOEM because you're going to import them as petrol engines. And we need to modify them while in the showroom before it's been delivered to the client. So yes, affordability is also key. We have to look at affordability and quality as well. Like I said earlier, there's a whole lot of... For our environment, you can see there's a great deal of informality. Uh, if you were to go to Akbo, uh, Mechanic Village, Akbo, I'm sure you probably sometimes you stroll past there. Uh, you see how they cannibalize engines and they repack the engines. Lagos is the same thing. Uh, and people sometimes are just their vehicles ordinarily, you say these are not roadworthy, but they have them on the roads. So to whom should we be speaking at the moment? Are, are these corporate entities or those in more structured public transportation segment. More structured, I would say, for instance, like the buses. If you're rolling out the buses, uh, corporate organizations that have large fleets, take those on. Because if you in the world for a long time, decades, so that's why NADDC is mapping out a strategy uh, that will ensure this program is successful uh, under our, our mandate. So there's a couple of things that we're doing. We're going to go on a nationwide awareness program to reach as many technicians and, as, and mechanics as possible and the general public and make them aware of this technology, this usage of gas, and how it can be done safely and successfully, uh, talking about the advantages and the opportunities. And then we're also going to train uh, 
many uh, technicians around the country on the conversion and on the maintenance of such engines after the conversion. Like I mentioned earlier, the important thing is up to them and they'll just fly with it. So we're going to lean on that. Uh, uh, not just converting vehicles, but right off the bat, uh, Mr. Olajuwon mentioned Innocent. Yes, he's doing some great things. So a company like that could right off the bat produce vehicles that are dual fuel or gas powered. Uh, don't go to Sino trucks. Uh, and, and other companies too. So, and yes, I agree, it needs to... It's so much that appeals to almost everybody. I, I mean, the, the tricycle rider would want to, you know, fuel the keke and apep, of mm -hmm. course, uh, uh, very affordably. Uh, I don't want to say cheap. You know, the ordinary taxi driver would want to have, you know, access to cheap fuel. Yes. So, if gas is cheaper and affordable. Mm -hmm. I mean, it will appeal to everybody. Mm -hmm. But from my research, mm -hmm. the conversion process in other parts of the, of the world, mm -hmm. I hear cost between, I mean, conversion maybe to LPG, CN, CNG and all that, cost between 3000 to $4,500. Mm -hmm. um, we are told that you will need, I mean, some you know, amount of uh, money have been you know, put out there on the social media, mm. uh, maybe 250,000, I, I, I don't know. Who exactly is this thing targeting? Is it the low income earner? Is it the middle income earner? Is it a high brow? Considering the cost mm. Mm. of converting, you know, uh, uh, your car. Yes. Well, uh, you mentioned the cost uh, in other climbs uh, mm. that, that, that a, a wide uh, uh, slice of, of the uh, of the population, uh, low income earners, uh, medium income earners. And uh, so we will be working with stakeholders. Uh, this is very new, but we will be working with stakeholders to continue to bring down the cost of that conversion. And that is why we're embarking on research and development. We have an R&D facility that the world in, is going. In, in terms of mileage, how far mm. can an auto gas go? Can, 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 can you drive? an auto, you know, gas-filled car mm -hmm. for long journeys. And in this part of the country, we know there's still night travels. You know, people still make night travels. People still mm -hmm. travel long distances. Lock for two hours. Mm -hmm. If you are bonds, isn't it? I believe it's the same principle that will apply in general with auto gas. True the, or false? The same principle would, would, would apply. Mm -hmm. And then it, it burns cleaner. So per volume, we get more energy from it than the other fuels. The other fuels. Are, are, there, yes. are there situations where you, could, where you have, because I know that um, there are vehicles, you know, that do overheating, you know, once they are caught up in traffic. Mm. <laughs> and we know that in this part of in, in Nigeria, I mm. mean, tendency is that you will run into traffic. So mm. is there a chance of overheating and then boosh, something happens? <laughs> <laughs> No. Over, no, over no. Hit, sorry, I'm not an engineer. Claire is carrying. Claire is carrying. When the vehicle overheats, I'm sure you see uh, the radiator cover on cocks, and then you can see the steam that emerges from that. If that steam mixes with gas, mm. uh -huh. well, the, the, the gas, the whole system, because uh, even in petrol or diesel vehicles, such steam hardly mixes with, with those fuels. Because with a vehicle, the system is very efficient in keeping every uh, material within weight. Talking about CS, and we're also talking about LPG, which is liquefied petroleum gas. Liquefied petroleum gas, also known as butane, is the one we use for cooking at home. Uh, so, which vehicle will use LPG, which vehicle will use CNG, and how can you, you know, make the difference? That's why you get the issue of, look, who should access this in the meantime? Uh, before we start having uh, issues. Sorry, Juma, before, before you take Kinsley's question, we would like to uh, excuse uh, um, uh, Mr. Jelani Adio here. Uh, of course, he has a national assignment to catch. So let's quickly excuse the, uh, Jelani Adio, Director General, National Automotive Design and Development Council, NADDC. We would hope we would have loved to have you, but we can't. We have to let you go. Allah Juma, please go ahead with your response. Um, um, I, I guess the first question is uh, the market for auto gas. Um, uh, the market for auto gas is uh, anyone and every every everyone that feel the need. 
Uh, what we normally use in terms of marketing or mean standby every conversion we do, we will be responsible for our conversion and we will take full responsibility of whatever comes out of it. And that shows how much confidence we do have. Then I hope that I've, has, I've answered that question. Then in terms of the gas that we use, uh, the CNG, the reason why we recommend CNG for diesel engines is because uh, it gives you a better uh, performance and the ratio is uh, between 45 to 50 percent, depending on how much and what engine is being converted uh, for moving uh, vehicles. And uh, uh, why we will recommend LPG for petrol is because it's best for petrol. And uh, we do you can use CNG for petrol engine as well, but we will get more results using LPG for petrol engines and CNG for diesel engines or LNG for trucks. And uh, those are the things you've seen around with the trucks uh, that can substitute the supply of diesel by 40 to 45 percent of CNG. And the, 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 the way it works is uh, you see inject and flashing the same diesel and gas into the engine at the same time. So for diesel engine, both gas and diesel will be working. So if you're consuming maybe 1,000 liters of diesel uh, a, a month, once it's been retrofitted to, to run on dwarf force system, you will need just about 600 or four or 550 liters. Then you substitute it. You need is about 110 naira of worth of LPG propane. So, sorry, Juwan. I, I think you're getting sorry? too. I think you're getting too, too much too technical for for even some of us here in the studios. You know, but just for the benefit of the viewer, you know, sometimes we just complicate so, uh, an easy uh, e technology. This is a technology that we want everyone to key into. So, for the benefit of the viewer, which of the gas uh, types? Or varieties, LPG, CNG. Which car is to LPG and which car is to CNG? Just simple. Say, just give us a simple answer. Straightforward. CNG diesel. We cannot use LPG for diesel engine because the savings won't be much. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Lajuwon and indeed the other guests, uh, we're going to have to take a short break now. There are a number of uh, very interesting tweets that we have received. When we come from that break, we'll take the tweets and then get your responses to the issues that they are raising. Fulfilling. Everybody believes their way is best. That's why Golden Penny Pasta is our favorite meal because due to its non-stickiness, it allows me to satisfy everybody just the way they want it. Golden Penny Pasta, made with durum wheat, is tasty, nutritious, a source of protein and fiber, and non-sticky. So you can cook, serve, and eat your pasta just the way you like it. Go on and enjoy your Golden Penny Pasta the way you want it. With Golden Penny Pasta, your way is best. My name is Nando Jamda. Mohammed. Stevita. Hussein Musa. Rodima Joel Tinji. Saeed Musa. John. I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for more than eight years now. And I said that plantain. Nakai Kimami Shekara Uku. I've been selling my tomatoes for about 10 years now. And I do it for a better Nigeria. And I do it for a better Nigeria. Now, when I say that, I'm going to take a look at the teacher. And you can see how we're doing our small little work to make a Nigeria. I'm going to talk about my business. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Dialogue, empathy, love and unity. These are vital components of nation building. If there are no incentives from the government, it may also be hard to find filling stations stuck in it. All right, and uh, Yunusa Idri says switching to auto gas is an alternative to fuel. Is uh, as an alternative to fuel is a good policy. The demand and consumption of PMS will reduce, which will lead to a slight reduction of pump price. GMDNNP says the conversion is free, while the aid of the Minister of Petroleum said. It will yeah, there was, uh, uh, where, where are you going to get uh, all kinds of figures? If you want to convert a million vehicles, that's by 2021, 
They multiply that by 250,000. That means the government is going to shell out some 250 billion uh, naira at a time that the economy is in recession and government is house pressed for revenue to run the system. Now, don't we do our environment much good. Right, Kamri Dingala thinks the alternative is an excellent development. Leo Fadaka, auto gas is a great idea, even though the cost of conversion is high and counterproductive in a recession. Electric cars should equally be of focus to meet the changing global standard. And made in Nigeria cars should be circumstant in the long run. Okay, uh, Akejo allows in technical term. It isn't alternative, but also if you're cleaner than gasoline or fuel oil. More information should be out to emphasize on safety and benefits. As gas, it has to be filled up and handling should be with care. <laughs> Cecilia Okoroma, great initiative by the federal government. Imagine the wastages over the years. Imagine also the job losses. This initiative will sure create employment and help reduce the hazards as a result of gas flaring. Mm. And this is an interesting one coming from Abubakar Ismail. He says, my car, and that is a 206... Uh, uh ...to kerosene, given the abundance of gas which is being flared. Today, a kilogram of gas sells at 320 naira per kg. What is the guarantee that after spending to convert to auto gas, auto gas won't be more expensive than petrol? Very good question, if you ask me. Well, Suleiman Babagana uh, says this is uh, timely, considering, of course, the impact to reducing uh, uh, gas emission or carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere. It is more efficient and less harmful to the environment. Okay, right. Those are the tweets. It, yeah, uh, clear. When it says which one will be more expensive in the long run, perhaps the argument would then come is market forces. Well, That's whether petrol will, be more, petrol will be then become cheaper than our economics. Yes, but, but yeah, again, knowing that this, this is also, um, uh, it, it could be depleted. No, well, that's, uh, that's uh, I mean, uh, decades and decades and decades from now, not, not immediately. But we thought so about, about petrol, remember? No, petrol is not being depleted. That's like, petrol is from crude oil, one of the many derivatives from crude oil. Uh, so it's still being produced. When you say, crude. Uh, that was, yeah, it's crude. Professor Albert Obano uh, of the University of Benin, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, speak to us. I mean, we do know that there was a time, uh, for instance, something, this is not the fuel now, powering it, but some of the engine components. You know, you had, we used to hear of carburetor engines and contact set. Nobody bothers about carburetor engines these days. Uh, so then our mechanics have also become used to it. But the complexity is being described either by Jelani, whom we've signed off, or by uh, Olajuwon. Uh, those are matters that will appear in the meantime to be far-fetched. But uh, from a mechanical point of view, what advantages are likely to uh, occur uh, in terms of engine longevity and reduction in maintenance cost? Okay. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, first and foremost, uh, if you are using auto gas, in terms of combustion, uh, it's, it's a cleaner fuel, and the deposits you have inside your engine are less. And, uh, and totally from that point of view, the comparing your auto gas with uh, your diesel or your petrol, in terms of the of the engine, the auto gas will be better. However, I must stress, we must have the competencies. The technicians, the mechanics must realize this. So uh, comparing the two fuels, therefore, the auto gas, the, uh, the diesel or the petrol, for, for proper uses and all that, uh, the auto gas will have advantages. I must also stress to the condition of the vehicle. If the engines are very old, then the other gas advantages will be far diminished. So before we even back on, uh, before we embark on any auto conversion that you use in maintaining, uh, I don't just explain. Mm. Uh, maybe Oluwashon will, will respond to this, but we, I don't mm. have a question. If the engine oil you are going to be using for uh, auto gas is different. From, from the, the engine, or you know, the one we just see, they say this one, you know, they have all kinds of brands. I'm sure that because <laughs> this one will be fewer in number, maybe the price will also go up. Go up. They say market forces, say demand and supply. No, this one is for big men, or this one is for, you know, and so 
I don't know. See, uh, the, the price is, is increasing. It's going higher. It's going higher. But let me bring in... And uh, you cannot go to, to, cannot go to Ladipo or Akpo. That's, or to look for passport. Honestly, that, that's why I want to bring in Dixon in Warime because Dixon has always emphasized on the fact that we have local capacity, indigenous capacity to manufacture some of these things. So Dixon, if you if you listen to uh, Professor Fatai Anafi and of course his classification of and it is not the same capacity as we have in Apo or uh, Matori, that's in Lagos. Or else, elsewhere, where you have uh, mechanical workshops. Yes, we have the capacity in country. Mind you, auto gas is not new. It didn't start in 2020. From ASME, and that is the same ASME standard we are using here. The International Standard Organization adopted the issue of fabrication of LPG tanks. What have you? From ASME. The standard organization of Nigeria only domesticated it. And that is the standard we are using here. We can produce as good as any other um, um, uh, tank. In where we are here, in the locality where we've been servicing our clients, when standard organization of Nigerian staff, recently they came and saw our product when they came for tank certification, they, they marveled. Some of these tanks marveled at the quality of the tank. We have MANCAP certification, DPR is equally there. These are regulatory bodies, and all that we work with is the international ASME code. All the time. All right, uh, mm. Dixon Iwari, thank you very much. Uh, very quickly, uh, to Mr. Aluwa Shagun Olajuwon. Well, while the other guests were responding, one of our studio hands uh, just chipped in something uh, to <laughs> us. I would thought we could also share this again. This is early days, as we indicated, that sometimes you see it on the road. It's not everybody that it happens to. If a vehicle is going on, and the few, few auto gas anywhere like you do with uh, petrol. And the good thing about auto gas is uh, the nozzle. The gun, nozzle guns are, are dedicated. So uh, you, can only, you cannot even go to a cooking gas refilling plant to refuel into a car if it hasn't got the right nozzle because it's like an husband and wife, it has to click. So it's from a safe tank to another safe tank, then you burn it through the engine. So for the petrol... All right, uh, sorry, I'm afraid just at the right uh, point to sign off our guest. Uh, so let me start from you, Mr. Lua Shion Olajuwon, MDCO Autogas Africa. Of course, uh, your company converted uh, the vehicles unveiled by Mr. President to both LPG and CNG. We'd like to appreciate your contributions. Um, good morning, Nigeria, today. Thank you very much. And also... Unlimited super fast internet access from Intel 4G. Intel, live more. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can watch ATA International live on your TV, computer, iPad, tablet, and phone. Log on to visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment, then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile devices to watch NTA International. Manner of fake news and misleading information on COVID-19. For medical advice, go on the WHO website, Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC website, or stick with the advice raised from the Presidential Task Force. This is the network service of the NT.
wise ones have said that man proposes, but God disposes. To some people, it's just a saying, but it's the truth. But our elders, are they very happy with this? Not so. Let me share a story with you that our elders shared with us. The story of the woodpecker. The woodpecker is a bird that digs very well into wood and all that. 